Oui. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of UiPath Forward 2024 here in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside my co-host and analyst, Dave Vellante. We're talking about the stack. We're talking about the stack, yes. and who better to do that than Graham Sheldon, he is the CPO of UiPath. Thank you so much for coming back on the show. Well, thanks for having me, Rebecca. Dave. See you again. <laughs> Good to be here. So we are, we're going to be talking about supercharging productivity and, and UA, UiPath's new releases that are going to increase efficiency. I know you're fresh from the main stage delivering a keynote address that was well received. Can you talk a little bit about the, the agentic vision that, that you Absolutely. put out? So when you look at the major advancements in productivity, it's been a while since we've seen a real step function in what we can do with technology. It's been, you know, the advent of the PC, the internet, mobile product, mobile computing. Um, and we've basically seen that over the last year, generative AI is getting to the point where it's actually possible to think about applying automation to brand new scenarios and taking the existing workflows and automations and expanding them. And I'll just use an analogy for this. Yeah. In the past, our robots were really good at some of the like left brain thinking, right? The things that are rules based, where it's deterministic what you needed to do, where a developer could sit down and write down all the different cases that would be necessary. Well, that got us pretty far. Like there's companies that have been very successful with that but there's still a lot of work that's left to be done. People are doing too much. And it's those kinds of more variable tasks, the more creative things, the more adaptive things that generative AI is really good at. And the advent of agents as a way to bring that to life in an enterprise gives you that right brain. And so now working together, you need both, you need robots and agents working together, which is why we believe, and Daniel painted this vision earlier today, that the future is both agentic and robotic. And UiPath is going to make that a reality. With a human thrown in there too. Absolutely, people are still very much involved for the most critical decisions. And one of the key reasons for that is because you need to be able to trust what's going on. So. Over time, you know, the, uh, we're going to emulate more and more of what humans can do, but you need to develop that trust. You need to show examples and make sure that like, when you're about to go approve a contract or hire someone or um, make a critical, uh, uh, critical decision about whether a patient receives care or a particular type of care, you want to make sure that the experts are still in the loop to make those kinds of decisions. You know, I'm looking at a um, US productivity growth. I finally found one. Okay. It's from Bloomberg. And to your point, Graham, um, you saw a spike in the 50s and 60s mm -hmm. with the consumer boom. That's right. But if it, So it's a, it's a chart of the year over year uh, growth and productivity, which is very spiky, as you can imagine. And then there's a five year average, which Again, to your point, it, it, in the 50s and 60s, you had the, a big you know, hump up, and then pretty much flatlined. But again, from like 92 to 2000, and it says here, late 90s tech boom, I would say it was the PC and the adoption of that. I mean, I remember well, you used to have to sign up to use a PC. It was like one PC, I was at IDC, and there were like, I don't know, hundreds of us, and nobody really was using it, so we would sign up. And then of course, overnight, everybody got a PC, there was a, a, a local area network, so there was 10 years of steady productivity growth, and then you saw spikes up and down, because you had, you know, 2007, and you saw a little spike, obviously in 2020 with, with COVID, but we haven't had a sustained productivity, you know, growth since really the, the PC revolution. That's right. So we've been kind of waiting, and one would expect if we're going from you know, today's, you know, semi-automated world to one that is heavily automated that we could see another, you know, decade plus of productivity growth. What do you yeah, think? We certainly believe that that's possible. 
I mean, actually, the PC was a really good example where it democratized what was being done on mainframes. You had to, you know, spend an enormous amount of money and have a huge piece of hardware sitting in your, you know, in your enterprise in order to make use of computing before the PC came. And then further democratized with mobile phones. We all have supercomputers in our, our pockets right. these days. And I think one of the things that UiPath aims to do with our agentic vision and roadmap is to do the same for some of this generative AI technology and make it a little easier for the both the developers and the citizen developers and even ben, business end users through things like autopilot to make that accessible to more and more people. And you know, we're talking about productivity, it's kind of a a heady concept. Right. I, the thing that I get most excited about, David, is actually what it does for the way we work. Like, we just spend a lot of time doing things that we, we never thought we would have to do. Like, when you went to school to, you know, be a reporter, you weren't, like, told you'd have to be doing a whole bunch of data entry to go, you know, fill out your expense reports when you go come back from the conference, right? Like, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. nobody likes doing that kind of stuff. So I think it really, like, it, 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 it this, yes, it, it drives productivity, but it also changes people's lives in a real material way, um, both in terms of the way they work, but in terms of the kinds of outcomes, the kinds of customer experiences that you can get and the kinds of employee experiences that you can get. And the kind of lives that they lead outside of work, just to, to bring it back to that Absolutely. too, in the sense of having more time, if their brain is freed up from that that administrative burden, then they have more time to, to live their lives. Yeah. The fun part is solving those problems, being creative, you know, coming up with plans and designing new things, not entering data into a spreadsheet or getting it out of an ERP system, right? So from a product standpoint, can you talk to some of the things that are, what are the salient attributes of your new stack, if I can use that term, a uh, tip of the hat to, to Alex over at the new stack. <laughs> um, but you've got AI integration, you got computer vision, which has always been a fundamental differentiator for you guys, and it was sort of the initial capability that launched you all. Hybrid, fine, that's cool, you got to run anywhere. Um, scalability, Daniel talked about that. You got to have low code, totally understand that. Um, and the ability to orchestrate and have a framework to manage all these agents, not just a single co-pilot, multiple agents, mm -hmm. and as we talked to Daniel today about um, tapping tool chains, being able to leverage tool chains uh, extensively so that the agents can really, it can un unlock the power of the agents. So put that all together for us, if you will. Sure. What is that, what does the new UI path stack look like? Yeah, so let me walk through the stack as, yeah. as, it as it's going to exist in the future. So, in the experience layer, we've seen this evolution from automation with AI sort of plugged in to these digital assistants where you're doing things in more natural language, which is a sort of reactive experience. So you ask it to do things and it'll be able to do a certain set of things. And in the future, like what, what we're, where we're at now is that we can start to do more proactive things and we can do things with more than just text. So images and video and things like that. But in that experience layer, to your point, David, we will have you know, co-pilots co in different experiences and autopilots and agents that help you do work across them. And that's one of the main differences that UiPath sets up itself apart by and is very proud of is being able to really connect different data silos, connect different systems of record, systems of engagement, because real work happens between all of those systems and across different people and different departments. When you're trying to solve a customer's problem, you've got to access Salesforce, you've got to access SAP, you've got to access maybe the, even the HRM system and maybe some other documents. All of that data is locked away, perhaps in unstructured. So in the experience layer, we're going to enable that by allowing you to build agents and to also plug into other agent experiences like Copilot. Then below that is sort of the orchestration layer. So we're going to let you build workflows, end-to-end -end workflows, that let you plug in the right piece. It might be an agent for that right brain stuff. It might be a robot to do some of the left brain stuff, to pull data out or to enter. And it might be a human in the loop, a person um, who's doing those things, as well as all of the 
and the AI pieces that you've got. So you've got workflows that connect multiple different building blocks that we will help you orchestrate. That orchestration goes beyond just building the workflows though and the building the agents. It also helps you, the, the agents plan what to do, to learn over time, and then for the administrator to be able to monitor what's going on, audit what's happening. And that is, brings us to the last part of the platform, which is the base, the foundation, where the AI trust layer sits, where you can make sure that only the right people or only the right agents are accessing the right data. We're doing things like PII masking so that we're not gonna pass you know, sensitive data to you know, LLM providers and we're guaranteeing you don't get models learned. So you got the experience layer with applications like Autopilot, you've got the orchestration layer where you can compose and run these workflows over time that get better and better, and then the foundation that contains the trust layer where you can make sure that you're well-governed and secure and compliant. So there's not a distinct, in that picture that you just painted, there's not a distinct data layer, but there is access connections to the data. Do you need a way to harmonize that data so that it's consistent, so that it's a sort of single version of the truth, as they say, which enterprise data warehouses never gave us, Hadoop never gave us, the modern data stack never gave us. Do we need that in order to serve the agents up harmonized data so they can act on it, or does AI do that? What's the magic that does that? Yeah, David, it's a good question. I think uh, the orchestration layer is going to enable enterprises to do some of that. So data comes in many different forms, as you know. There's the highly structured forms that it comes in. Think of like um, tax forms and ID cards and databases, right? There's the semi-structured kind of things like invoices, uh, loan applications, that kind of, kind of thing. And then you have the completely unstructured data, the communications data, the emails, the chats, as well as some of the like stuff that's um, locked away in these really long documents, like the policy documents that people have to use. Um, today we talked about one of our customers, one of the, uh, they, they collect plasma for the purposes of helping to you know, advance medications in the world. And in order to make that possible, clinicians intake donors, and they have this hundreds of pages that they have to try to memorize but really what's going to happen, right, is they're going to be there you're like saying, hang on, you said you had this condition and this, <laughs> this medication? Hang on, hang on a second. And they go through and they're going to yeah. go, oh, and then they go cross-reference that with the medications and, the, you know, the cross, it's, it's, a, it's really hard to do, right? And, of course, the patient's just sort of sitting there, twiddling their thumbs. It's not or a an emotional time. turmoil of what, what do I possibly That's have? That's exactly right. So to answer your question more directly, yeah, but one of the critical applications of the orchestration layer is to create these workflows that can do things like keep your master data in sync between different systems. And it's a really good point because today business logic, you can go put it into every single one of these different siloed applications or you can bring it out. And that some of that business logic could be the stuff that robots do but more importantly now as we look at the agentic future, you're also not going to want to do that for your AI. Every single application has an AI front end. Like, there's a co-pilot for everything, right. right? And yes, there's models behind that that might be very good in that particular silo. But are you going to really want to do context grounding and manage your access in every single one of those places? You know, uh, there's a lot of practitioners out there in the systems record that preach clean core. You've probably heard yeah, of that. Sure. The same is true for AI. And we think that UiPath is in a great position to help orchestrate all of your AI activity across those silos. So that business logic, the data, and the metadata still is siloed inside those applications, but if I understand it correctly, you have the technology and the connectors to, to surface that for the agents, and it's, is, is, it, is, it a, is it a two way connection? In other words, can I not only read and not have to copy, but I can also update, I can push back to those systems through integration? Yeah, of course, you absolutely can. Um, and some of the, actually, you're getting touching on something interesting, which is um, how can you really trust that the agents are not going to mess something up, Yikes. right? People are afraid about the power of AI, and um, I've talked to several customers who are like, 
boy, we tried this tool, we gave it access to the whole API, yeah. and it ran amok through my financial data. Like, I've got these Excel spreadsheets, and it just rewrote them, and I have no history of that now. That's a problem. So, the, what I like to think, it, last year I was on, and I told you, you know, AI without automation is like a brain without a body. Yeah. The same is true for agents. So, agents are nothing without the tools that you give them. You know, you think a painter is no, nothing without their paintbrush, the uh, musician is nothing with, without their orchestra, the, with the orchestra behind them, right? So agents are nothing without the right tools. And what we are taking a, a, a position on, which I think is really unique, is that because we have an automation platform and all the automations people have already built, every single automation becomes a tool for the agent. So the agent is not walking around your enterprise, doing whatever it wants to, it's on rails. You give it a certain set of tools that can do only a set of things that you want it to, and if it screws up or it's unsure of what to do, we built in the ability to escalate to people to get what it needs and learn over time. Earlier on the show, we had some of your colleagues talking about the expansion of partnerships here at UiPath. Can you talk a little bit about what it means from the product organization in terms of the opportunities that this pivot and expansion unlocks? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we uh, we think of ourselves sort of as like the Switzerland for uh, business data. I don't know if Daniel told, told you that earlier, but... <laughs> in um, so many words, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things that makes us kind of unique is that um, we work really well, whether it be at the UI layer, or the API layer, or the model layer, with all of the most mission critical systems of record and all the mission critical systems of engagement. And not at a sort of surface level that you might hear from some other of our competitors, but very, but deep. And in the last mile, you know, even green screens, we still are working on making sure we're best in class at that kind of stuff. So if we're gonna deliver on an ecosystem agnostic point of view on how to approach these problems, we've gotta have great partnerships with some of those systems of record. We also want to partner with the best AI models. We're gonna come up with some of them in, in some domains, but we're not gonna be coming up with AI models for everything. And the models themselves are becoming more commoditized over time. But what's very clear is that it's changing all the time. So we're working with the best in class model providers like Anthropic, um, that were, is, is one of the models that we're using in Autopilot to help with some of the conversational and natural language understanding. Uh, we're working with um, Inflection AI to do some of the trusted generative AI things for folks who want to be on-premise. We're working with Microsoft and their cognitive services as a, one of the uh, options for people to be able to build into their, their automations. Um, we're working with um, SAP is probably the, for these sort of com more complex end-to-end -end automations. And so we're embracing all those different categories, the AI providers, the systems of record providers, the, um, and, and all the systems of engagement to make sure that we can really make that a reality for our customers. I was uh, tooling around last night in the exhibit area and I, there was a de there's a demo uh, you should check it out, and, and it basically shows you, if you are a developer, how you can build agents, and then if you're kind of in kindergarten, how you can build agents, like for me. Um, and it was pretty cool that so you, you're, you're enabling with low code or no code citizen developers to actually create domain-specific knowledge agents, if you will. Yep. And that's, is that an example of the type of tooling that you're, you're It's a fantastic about? example. Um, yeah, we're really trying to democratize these tools for citizen developers, for business end users, and for professional developers as well. Mm -hmm. And because last year, you know, we and people had access to all sorts of generative AI tools, and they, but they, they needed some help. They needed to figure out what the right way was to do it. So in the agent builder experience today, we've tried to encode and, and make it easy for people to express the instructions you give to the agent. Here's the role you, you're, you're going to play. This is what I want you to do gives you access to the tools, and so you see which tools are available. All of those automations I mentioned that are now the powerful tools that, the context, so the documents or the data that you need to answer the questions accurately and reliably, as well as the escalations, that's the other key piece, yep. right? When you don't know what to do, please don't go invent it, don't hallucinate, come and ask me. Ask you dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that, that experience and also autopilot 
yeah. business end users, is gonna make it possible for anybody to build agents that are either reactive, like conversational ones, or proactive ones that work independently and make those dynamic decisions that's really gonna drive productivity for everybody. Well, it's a, an exciting future. Graham Sheldon, thank you so much for coming back Thanks on Thanks for having me. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of UiPath Forward. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.